And just when I thought that we had figured it out, my nephew dies suddenly halfway into the program. He's 19 and his heart just stops. And we're devastated. And my mom, who had been visiting, said um, she flew home early. And she said, you know, I got to go to the doctor when I go back. I got this pain. I think it's my underwire bra. I'm going to get a new one. And three weeks later, she's in the emergency room with a 12 centimeter tumor. But we don't know that it's a tumor yet. We just know that she's in, that we don't know that it's malignant. We just know that she's in the, um, the emergency room and they're, they're definitely admitting her. Um, and two days later, I'm here in Atlanta. I don't know that it's a tumor. I don't know that it's malignant. I'm not exactly sure. They're running all of the tests. And the, her doctor, an oncologist, calls me. I'm at work, um, an internship as a, at a chiropractor's office. And he says, we need to have a conversation for which he gives me my mom's diagnosis, which is stage four um, lung cancer and that she has this 12 centimeter uh, tumor and it's wrapped around her aorta at somewhere around 5 p.m. I'm digesting this news no more than an hour later. My brother calls me and he sounds hysterical and I'm trying to, what are you saying? Um, and he says he's in another emergency room. My dad, who had said that he'd had um, back pain earlier that day, and I said, well, go to your chiropractor. Um, go, and um, he did. And the chiropractor sends him to the emergency room. He's in a different emergency room. My brother's on the phone hysterically with me. My father has an aortic aneurysm, and he is dying. And, And those are the moments that you think, what the hell? So my father passes uh, two hours later. Um, I fly home. My mom um, leaves the emergency room a week later on 14 different medications. She's never the same. She went in completely lucid. She's on so many different medications. She's not sure who I am, who she is. And we watch her suffer and, um, and die over the next three, two and a half months. And, and then I had to figure out how it was that I was going to show up for my family, my brother who had lost his son, then his mom, and then his dad, then his mom, right? He is, um, he's barely holding on. And I have to come back to Atlanta because this is where my family is. So I wrap up all things, make sure he's okay, my brother, come back here. And then I got to figure out how that I navigate through this. All three of my children were super close with their uh, grandparents. And so I'm off school. And when I go back, it's super terrifying. It's a year has gone by. All of my friends that I started the program with, they've already gone on and they're getting ready to graduate. And I just think, well, how is it that I'm going to put one foot in front of the other? And for me, it was my kids. For me, it was knowing we were still in the midst of, um, you know, economy uh, recession after 2008. We had not reestablished ourselves. So this was our way out. If I graduate, if I start my practice, then I will be able to take care of my family. And you put one foot in front of the other. And all of the stress of all of the things for, for many years combined um, and ultimately ended up with my husband and I divorcing, which was totally not what I wanted. I got married to stay married. and. So between graduating and then going through a really horrible divorce and needing some faith and really wanting to have a conversation with my mom, I missed her so much. And in her Bible, I had found where she had written the word faith and a girlfriend had taken me to a tattoo um, uh, shop for which I have zero tattoos, deathly afraid of it. 
and we take this word that my mom had written, faith, and we give it to the tattoo artist, and he tattoos on my wrist, faith, in my mother's handwriting, so that I can remember every day, if I put one foot in front of the other, and I keep my kids at my forefront, that that's, that's the purpose. And if I elevate myself and I'm a better version, then only success is waiting for me. And in that, I decided to open my practice. And it's been two and a half years, two, yeah, a little, I don't know, two and a half years, and I'm super excited because all things entrepreneur that I did not know, I'm learning and evolving and elevating and utilizing so many resources around podcasts like yours and so many others that feed into me, people that will have never met me um, have positively influenced in my life. So going back to your earlier question, what it means to me as being a black woman is being able to take what I've gained, what I've learned, and just to be able to reach back, be able to deposit something into somebody else's life that gives them enough to say yes to their dream, to say yes to the thing that they're pursuing, and then just go after it.